Uh, I appreciate everybody being here. Thank you for inviting me this year. Um, good morning, Tacoma, I guess, right? We're in Tacoma. We're not in Seattle anymore, Toto. Um, we're not in the Emerald City, but that's kind of cool. Uh, this is a beautiful facility. Can everybody kind of see me? Because I can't see anybody else. So yeah, This is just like, like it right okay. here. Yeah. It's, it's all right. Well, we start off Saturday, right? This is the first uh, of many today uh, from a lot of pinball people that will be talking to you guys. So thanks for everybody coming out. Appreciate it very much. Last year, I think I was here via Skype, right, Butch? You yeah. were here. Your face I was is not about, here. Your face and by is the way, I'm wearing up. shorts. So, oh, you know, God. they're not. He had to do that. Don't go all the way there. there. So, um, Thank God. There's not that much material. So like last year was my Uncle Vinny in Brooklyn. I have an Uncle Vinny in Brooklyn, okay? So when your Uncle Vinny in Brooklyn has a 90th birthday, you go. So last year he was 90 years old. His birthday is June 9th. And, um, you know, he was in D-Day, in fact. And this year he'll be 91. It's my dad's brother. And my dad will be 89. My dad will be up in a couple weeks uh, from Florida. And uh, D-Day was yesterday, you know. And as I was flying in, I came in from Chicago. I was at our office in Chicago, our Midwest campus, which I'll talk about later. Um, and I was also at Gene Cunningham's house, which, okay, uh, I could talk about that too. Uh, so I came in yesterday and I watched C-SPAN for a couple of hours as, um, the whole ceremony was going on. Um, I guess, you know, it was, it was kind of like um, taped from earlier in the day. Did anybody see that at all? I know we were into pinball yesterday. So, you know, 70 years ago, uh, you know, these, these brave men uh, landed on the beach in Normandy, 160,000 Allied troops, and you know, I, I can't even imagine it. I wasn't in the service or anything. So all the veterans, all the people, you know, thank, thank you for everything you've done over all the years. And it was really cool to see Queen Elizabeth, you know. So here I am sitting in my seat coming in from Chicago, watching C-SPAN with my iPad taking pictures of the TV in front of me that I'm watching. So that's how I got these. So... Um, Normandy, for me, that's a place I was at in 2010. Uh, I was on a tour through France, and one of the places I really wanted to go was to the American Cemetery. Um, and I walked on Omaha Beach. And this is a picture I took. I was trying to take a picture of the monument, and my iPhone was turned the wrong way. And I basically took this picture of myself by mistake. And it kind of like, you know, when they say a picture is worth a thousand words, when I even look at it, the emotion that comes back to me um, from that day was amazing to see all the grave markers and everything like that. And, you know, we play pinball and we have a lot of fun and everything like that and we forget a lot. But, you know, yesterday was a really kind of important day to remember, 70 years, all the young people that really don't know about that. Um, it's something to kind of remember and be thankful for and hopefully... Um, in this crazy world we live in, we could have more people play pinball and less people fight with each other and get in wars and try to kill each other. So um, that's what we're going to try to focus on this weekend. All right? So that was my beginning kind of thought as I was coming here um, and, and the anniversary. Um, so here's a shot. I just put together a little uh, keynote kind of thing so we have some pictures. Cause pictures are better than certainly looking at me. So here's um, the front of our building in good old downtown Lakewood, New Jersey. We have a 42,000 square foot building. And uh, Jersey Jack Pinball, that's basically all that's there. And some days I'll get up and I'll just, uh, or I'm traveling somewhere and I might hit some of the cameras in the building to see what's going on. And when I, you know, take a look at a camera, it's nice to see some of these kind of shots where, you know, this thing's happening or boxes packed, um, that kind of stuff. And yesterday, I just, I just looked at, you know, five o'clock yesterday to see what was going on. So it was nice to see people still packing boxes and games there to be picked up and all that kind of stuff. So that was pretty good. Um, what we've done in the last, uh, let's just talk about the last 
year or so of going to shows, you know, bringing games around the country, around the world to shows. The reaction to our game has been really great. And our job is to make the best possible game that we can make so that people line up to play it on location, especially and in a home or anywhere we could find it. Um, so here's a shot. This is from Ministry of Pinball. This was in Holland somewhere uh, about 10 days ago, where um, a group of uh, school kids, uh, Bert, uh, uh, our distributor out there, he brought, he brought some games to school. And this was the reaction of the kids. Um, we have a lot of different people, celebrities, that have our games. Um, this is uh, Mitch Album, the, the writer, uh, who, who loves our game. And he loved it so much, he actually sent me one of his books where he inscribed, uh, to Jersey Jack, thanks for so many hours of fun in the pinball galaxy. Hope you like my work half as much as I do yours. And that's you know really cool. Uh, when you get mainstream people um, loving pinball machines. You know, and uh, his slash uh, with his Wizard of Oz game, he doesn't think the theme is any less manly, I would guess. Uh, he loves his game. Um, we his, met him up in Detroit, and him and his wife, and he brought his uh, nephew over. Oh, you're talking about was, Mitch. Mitch. Yeah, I yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah, he came that. to the show and everything, yeah, right? Yeah, that was really right. cool. Um, here's a group of kids just at an amusement park, and uh, the... Dad uh, took a picture of them playing Wizard of Oz, and it's kind of a fascinating thing for a lot of kids. Uh, here's a bunch of drunken bums, um, you know, circling around a Wizard of Oz game. And uh, Brian, I think you're here somewhere, right? If he's not here, he's, he's not here. here. He's around song. somewhere in spirit. Um, you know, the door to our building is open all the time. Pretty much anybody wanders in. We have school kids, we have customers, we have potential customers, we have groups, we have, uh, we had a group of school kids come a couple weeks ago from one of the Hebrew schools down the block, and they saw the sign and they wondered what we did, and they wandered in and, and they got a tour. <laughs> so uh, they learned about pinball, but here's one of our customers come in and get a tour. Um, this is one of the other shows, I think this was Allentown this year, uh, where we showed the 75th anniversary game. Um, we have a Wizard of Oz game at the Smithsonian, and it's in the gift shop. And it's, it's kind of cool. We have a, a, a really great customer friend, Jeff Green, who lives down that way. And this game gets um, a couple thousand plays a week. And every week, the play field is black. Um, it, it is the most played Wizard of Oz game probably anywhere on planet Earth, including in our building. It's on free play. Um, hundreds and hundreds of people see it every week and play it. And I get a lot of emails. We sell games because of it, but it's not there because of that. It's really there because it's really cool to have a, a modern pinball machine in the Smithsonian. And uh, they love it. And uh, they, they want to make uh, one of our games part of one of their permanent exhibits in the American Museum. So that's pretty cool, too. Um, Here's a picture of uh, two of our biggest pain in the, uh, biggest supporters, uh, customers, uh, Gabe and Jeff. This was in Allentown. So the best thing is that we have this really great network of customers who become friends. Some of them are technicians. Some of them are operators. Um, but all these people that have supported the company over you know, the last few years that we started it, and remember, it, it started based on the faith of a lot of people believing that we'd actually build a pinball machine. So, you know, every day I thank them, I thank God, really, uh, because to me, without him, can't do anything. Uh, the faith of all the people, um, it's amazing to me. I don't even know if I could be a customer of my own company. Uh, if I'd have the patience to wait a year or two years or three years or whatever it is, some people wait uh, for games. Um, this is at another show. I see Butch in there. This was probably a Texas pinball festival. Butch, you're at a disadvantage because you can't see the screen. Yeah, but um, anywhere the game it. goes, it draws crowds. And uh, Rick Bartlett was over at Pinagogo a few weeks ago, and he called me up during the show, and he said, I just want to tell you that 
there's still a crowd around your game, and I would have thought by now everybody saw it and everybody played it, and everybody wouldn't care about it, but I just, I just can't believe that there's crowds of people around the game all the time. Um, you know, back in the day, so here's, here's the boss. So that's Bruce Springsteen and Clarence Clemens and Stevie Van Zandt, all the E Street band, you know, since we're from Jersey. You know, here's a guy that loves pinball. And what we've had today, we've had truly a resurgence in pinball in the last few years. Um, I, you know, we, we're not, we don't take credit for that. I, I think part of it is cyclical. Part of it is the fact that my other company, PinballSales.com, for many years, it sold pinball machines to the home. So in 2000, 2001, let's say it sold games to the home and kids there were 10, 12 years old. Well, guess what? Now they're 22, 23, 24, they're older, they're looking for pinball machines. They go out and that's why you have uh, barcades popping up and places like Shorty's and Dorky's and all these different places around the country where you have people that want to play games. And it's not just pinball, it's video too. So. A lot of the retro and old is kind of new and cool again because other generations discover it. But the cool thing about pinball, we know it's a skill game. Uh, the more you play it, the better you get. It's not like a video game where you master it. You know, last night I got to play Stratovox and Jungle King and a few of the other games that I, I love and I operated and I still remembered how many how many shots I had to shoot before I could get the ship on. Uh, on you know Sea Wolf before it comes out, and I still remember all those things and how many shots uh, to do different things. So pinball is a lot different. Um, the more we get pinball into mainstream media, uh, the more people we're going to build um, into the hobby and the business. And you know I've been asked about well, how come games cost so much money and what happened and all this kind of stuff. And I have my own theories about it, but. It's supply and demand, right? So the more people that want to buy pinball machines, the more the price is going to go up. So the good thing is people that have collections, well, the price of your games are going up. The bad thing about it is that the prices went up. So you know we're not trying to go up in our prices. We're just trying to make uh, a profit in our company. And you know putting new technology into something, investing millions of dollars to create a product, and then recovering that investment and making a profit, everything takes time and everything takes money. You know, uh, I, I don't think you're gonna see a $10,000 pinball machine from us. Uh, hopefully we're gonna find better ways to make what we're making and uh, be able to make it uh, less expensively, not cheap, uh, but learn from what we did with Wizard of Oz, with The Hobbit and with Pat Lawler's game and other games that we, that we go on from, from there. Um, I'd like to play this video, and I'm wondering how it's going to play. That's always fun, isn't it? Yeah, so this is um, kind of like let's see what happens moment, because if I go somewhere... Uh... Hold your breath and click the little play thing. Mm -hmm. It's okay. doing something. So if you come back in about 10 minutes, it'll no. start. No. So we'll wait for that to come up. And I guess you watch a commercial. Is there any audio for that? You've got to come down and tell them you want audio. I'll then hook it up if you'd like to. My device, up to the cloud it goes, back down it comes sounding better. We break down the walls of creation and we give music creation to the masses. Okay, so we'll necessity is the mother of invention. The obligatory <laughs> commercial that you need to watch before you watch the video. But you can't fast forward through. We took a white piece of paper and we looked at pinball, what it was, and we kept things that we liked and we changed things that we could change. We have a company, PinballSales.com, that sells games to the home market. There was a need for full-featured modern games by that customer base, and we decided we were going to create a product and fill that need. So you'll see immediately on this game you have a full featured LCD monitor in the head of the game instead of a static image. You have no light bulbs, it's all RGB LED lighting. The wing monkey flies down and captures your ball. You have a spinning house 
with the legs of the Wicked Witch of the East that pop out. You have to battle the witch and melt her. So all those things are physically in the game. We wanted something that would be uh, really cool when you walk up to it and see it and get new players to play pinball. The hardcore pinball people were a little skeptical until they got to play the game. Because anytime you change something that's so deeply rooted and has history to it, um, the purists say, well, that's different than a regular pinball machine. Right now, uh, the game in the April Playmeter magazine, which is our industry magazine, rates it number one for earnings. To hit the chart and be number one, it's like having a hit song, it's great. And because it's making money, operators want to buy it and put it on their locations, put them in movie theaters and put them in old places like that. Building a pinball company is something where you're going to have a lot of difficulties. And why was there only one or two other companies around doing it? Because it's difficult. Managing the bill of materials, all the parts, millions of dollars worth of parts that are in the building and in process to us, it's a real challenge for a manufacturing company today to get off from that and start from nothing um, in the United States today. But if you make the product that people want, they beat their way to your door and they and they buy the product. That's pretty good. Putting it on there. Still not as loud as those shorts, but it was, no. we could hear it. No, at least it worked, right? That's true. So uh, that was on um, CNN Money, which was which was kind of cool, and that and it got a lot of um, a lot of attention. So uh, these things we don't look for them. You know, we're not we're not actively. Um, really out there seeking press all the time. You know, if a flipper coil falls off the shelf, we're really not issuing a press release about it. We're just going about our business, you know, building pinball machines, and a lot of people come to us, which is really kind of cool. Um, this is a group, uh, New Jersey Entrepreneurs Organization, that came and visited us last Saturday. And it was, um, it's, you know, 90 business owners in the state of New Jersey that are entrepreneurial that started their own business and they brought their family and this was a shot on our front lawn of a bunch of them that would, you know, the rest of them was a beautiful sunny day and they were going to a beach party in Belmar and so many of them wouldn't leave our building and they wouldn't even come out of the building because they were having fun inside on tours and playing games there. They wouldn't even come out on the front lawn and take a picture. Um, and that was kind of cool and this is um, one of the shots of one of the little factory tours that were going on during the day. And what was really great to see was the amount of enthusiasm and curiosity from all of the kids. Um, because, you know, when you, when, you live in the, when you live in the woods, you don't really see all the trees. So I take a lot of things for granted. And as we go through the tour and we explain a lot of things about how it's done, and you sit there and you listen to yourself say some of it, or you hear other people say it, it's like, wow. That, there's a lot involved with it, and um, it, it's kind of cool that um, a lot of people get it, and they understand it, and they appreciate it, and uh, then they can get to play the product that's made. And um, they even had coloring contests, and they had uh, trivia contests, and everything like that. So that was pretty cool. So um, shifting gears a little bit, you know, I was in Chicago this past week, and uh, we have a lot of progress going on out there with um, The Hobbit. Uh, Pat Lawler has a lot of progress going on with his game, too. And I wanted to kind of embarrass Butch, uh, show uh, typical Butch. And that's uh, Jim Thornton wearing the Chicago hat and uh, JP and the other seats. And all that food is Eric's on the table. Yeah, right. Today. JP Can't does all of uh, the animation wow. and artwork, and he did the Playfield artwork on The Hobbit as well. And Jim really runs... Um, a million different jobs. Probably at Williams, his job was taken up by seven people. So he probably does the work of at least seven people right now um, in everything that he's doing. And, you know, to give Eric a little bit, that was Eric's breakfast. Oh, that's his food, too. You know, yeah. yep. So he's, he, likes, he likes to eat. So Eric uh, redesigned the lighting for The Hobbit. So those that have had issues with Wizard of Oz lighting that we finally solved, um, you know, it was solved by Eric, and um, the, the Wizard of Oz lighting is something that, um, um, you know, we're able to take care of that. This is a shot of me with Pat Lawler from uh, about a month, month and a half ago at his house uh, with all his games. 
And uh, his game, I'm not going to talk much about it, but I, I could tell you that it's a, it's a retro, innovative, futuristic kind of game. It's an original theme. Um, it's not a license. It's not a movie. It's not a comic book. It's not anything like that. It's something from his brain. And um, uh, John Yowsey is doing the artwork on the game. So we hired John Yowsey. And uh, he'll be doing the artwork on Pat's game. And that's kind of bringing uh, more of the team back together again. Um, so I'm, re I'm really thrilled about that. Uh, we also hired uh, Dave Thiel. He's here today. Dave's going to be doing the sound on the game. And you can hear Dave later. He'll, he'll be around, uh, talk to him. So that brings more of the team back together. Um, you know, so we want, we want to make the best game possible. That's what we want to do. Here's a shot of um, this I just took Thursday when I was out in Chicago. I played the, the latest Whitewood version. And the game played really great. Um, very, very happy with it. Very happy with uh, geometry changes. Some other things changed. The, uh, the upper left flipper is no longer there. It's a kicker now. Um, the orbit shot works great. Some of the other things about it. We haven't told much about this game. I've, I've gotten away with talking about 30% of what this game is. So um, one of the things I said at one of the other shows is that the Wizard of Oz, the I.O. board in our game, uh, there's 17 places on the I.O. board which are not populated with drivers. On The Hobbit, all 17 positions are populated with drivers. So there are 17 things that are driven on The Hobbit that are not driven on The Wizard of Oz. So when you look at Wizard of Oz and you say, how do you put more in a game? Well, you didn't see The Hobbit yet. Okay, you didn't see it. So the idea with The Wizard of Oz was we were making the greatest pinball machine ever. Now, I know that's a big statement to make, but we have to believe that. Because if we think we're going to make a piece of junk, we're going to make a piece of junk. So the Hobbit team, th their focus is to say, Wizard of Oz is the worst game we'll ever build. That's their focus. Not that we're going to say it's a bad game, because it's, it's a spectacular game. I'm very proud of it. I'm very proud of the company, the team, the people, our customers, everybody that helped in that game. I love it. But I'll probably appreciate it a lot more if I put one in a box right now and I open it up in five years. I'll appreciate it a lot more than right now. But you know, a lot of operators come up to me. A lot of business owners come up to me. The game's making great money. They want more money. They want more games. You know, So it's really good. Um, so the Hobbit, you'll see some different things. Here is. Um, Let's see if I can, if this doesn't lock up for some reason. OK. This is a little teaser artwork. So what we're going to start doing is releasing the Playfield artwork, which was approved by Warner Brothers the other day. So that's a monumental achievement. Uh, JP did an amazing job with it. And um, this, hey, that's pretty cool. Wow. I get that. Disorienting. Yeah, yeah really. Um, so you could see um, a little bit of the detail. And um, when I asked JP today to send me the full playfield image, which he did, um, so he said, don't show the whole playfield. <laughs> but if you want to show it to some people separately, that's OK. Because obviously JP knows me. So Jerry Thompson and all the rest of you, <laughs> if you want to see it, just Find me and I'll pull it up on my magic iPad follow and you can shorts, take a look yeah. at it and everything like that. Yeah, if you, you follow see those my across shorts. The room. Yeah. yeah, yeah. And so, um, you know, I want to hand this off to Butch. This is um, our test fixture, which the guys built uh, in, in uh, Jersey. And uh, we have a, an upcoming release for Wizard of Oz. Um, there's another software release coming, believe it or not. You know, the game is done. But this game now, uh, probably in the next week or 10 days, I asked Keith to just give me a little bit of an idea of what's in the update. Because you know, I saw a lot of it the other day when I was in, in our uh, Midwest campus. But I had him just send me a little email. So Butch will talk to you about uh, some of the manual. But the whole game manual is in the game. 
Now, I understand you know, the game has to work in some way, shape, or form to access the manual. Okay, so you know, you'd still have a manual on a, uh, on a disk, and we will be printing manuals too. So they'll be available uh, probably in the next few weeks. But the whole game manual, how many pages of it? 380. So look, the game weighs the most out of a pinball machine in a long time. The game weighs 350 pounds. I passed the page. The manual per pound. is 380 pages for the game manual, okay? Which is in the game. You can pull it all up, and Butch will tell you it's got all hyperlinks and everything like that. It's amazing. One of the other things in the game, you're going to be able to put pictures on a thumb drive and plug it into the game and then display it into the attract mode of the game. So like, here's a picture that just, you know, was pulled up. Ted just put something in there and pulled it up. Um, also, actually, the, the um, animation, all of the screen images, the resolution is improved. So as beautiful as the game looks now, uh, the slight tearing and the resolution, um, Keith says, improve resolution, monitor independence. Game will tolerate different kinds of monitors, and uh, it would include uh, much improved video quality for 27-inch 1080p monitors compared to what it used to be. Um, there's um, adjustments, audits, backup, restore, custom images, haunted scoring and munchkin modes, now award and bonus, improved font rendering, Almost everything you could think of uh, now in the status report and test report. Um, there are a lot of little gameplay and display bugs fixed. And Keith, as Keith could only write, several other surprises I don't want to reveal yet. So that's coming in your release. So just when you think the game was done, these guys, I'm not telling them not to do stuff. Do it. It's your passion. Follow your passion. Do the best you can and make the greatest game you can. So my part of this now, I'm going to turn it over to Butch, and he's going to pick up on his accomplishment, which I think is really great in the manual and technical support. So it's all yours. All right. Let me have a HDMI cable there. Oops. My standard connector, you're in your Apple with all these adapters. Okay. So as uh, Jack said, the manual is finally finished. One of the things that, um, like, like he said also, he's never really told us, you know, has to be done by this date, this date. Uh, it's kind of like quitting smoking. I've finished this manual about five times now. It's pretty difficult to do, but... I, I wrapped it up about five different times, and then I kept thinking of things. I had a, a to-do list that I made for myself originally, things I wanted to be in there, things I thought needed to be in there. And even as late as, you know, just four or five days ago, I, I come across one, and I'm like, geez, there's nothing in there that tells you how to change the game from 120 to 220 volts. That's crazy. It's got to be in there. So I, I kind of, one of the last things I, I sat down and, and did was uh, was add hyperlinks and, and uh and bookmarks and uh, thumbnails and things like that. So here's the PDF version of the manual. It's uh, right now on our website. We just launched it uh, as, you know, saw me typing wrong here. Another live event. Yeah, another live event. Uh, Alex in uh, New, New York was uh, putting it on the, the website as we were starting this up. So there's a 3.0 version of the manual. If you go, I go into here and I, I just go down, I know where there's a link here to that. I'll go to the uh, WAS menu system. So now you get a click. You get to see all these uh, all these different um, bookmarks here that'll take you to different areas of the game or of the manual. Um, I can go down to my USB update here, and I know there's a link in here. Boy, this thing's getting tiny once I do that. Oh. There's a link to the support website, so I can drop on there. And now version 3.0 of the manual, dated. June of 2014 is available. I looked at my emails. Interestingly enough, Jack was kind of taking a last look at the manual this morning before we put it on the on the website. And I looked all the way back to when he and I talked first about doing the manual, and it was August 1st, 2012. He sent me some of the first stuff. Um, we had talked just the night before, and literally the next morning, you know, my inbox is full of emails where he's forwarding me things saying, get going, get going, like 
Like he said, follow your passion, do your thing, make it happen. I have faith in you. And, uh, you know, that meant a lot to me because, you know, all the guys in the company, even at that point, were like, who's this guy you hired? What can he do now? What's he going to do for us? So they're not asking that anymore. They're not, yeah. <laughs> they're asking why you keep me around. I think, but anyway, um, so there's the, the website there. Any, anything now you can see when you're moving along in the text, if you come over and it turns into a finger, you know, that's telling you, you can, uh, it's a link now. So I've got links into uh, different portions of the manual when, you're, when I have pages and, and pages of, uh, of tables and things, and like for the parts information, if I go there, it clicks, takes me right to the part. Um, if I go to like a 70 volt coils here and I can scroll down, all these page numbers are now linked. So if I want to look at the crystal ball VUC, it's part of this feature here and it comes up on the, as a vertical up kicker assembly. So um, all the uh, different um, matrix and things like that and go to the dedicated switch matrix table. I've, I've actually linked these to the connectors up here, actually take you to the schematic in which that, that connector resides, and if you click on there, it takes you back to the table. So you can go back and forth through here, looking at, at what's connected to that. If you're looking at a specific switch in here, you can go up to the either the row or the column, and it'll take you to that page of the schematics, and you can now uh, zoom in and look in great detail at any portion of it. And uh, the, that, that's really cool about all the images that are put in here. They're all you know hand drawing things that I put in from Adobe Illustrator. And uh, the more you zoom in, the better the quality gets. So they look a little sketchy in the, in the very small. But as you get in closer, the, the quality improves. So you can look at individual diode numbers, things like that. Um, some of the latest things, I, uh, this manual has literally doubled in size since the last time we put it on the website. That's kind of on me. I should have put some kind of a in, you know, intermediate version of that to, um, in between. It really had enough information in there to to uh, warrant another release, but I never got around to doing it. I was too busy putting more stuff in it. <laughs> it's crazy like that, but here's one of the last things I, I put in just the other day. I'm, I'm like, well, you know, I wanted to do a cabinet wiring diagram. So I started in and I, and I put, started with a blank piece of paper and I started adding things like the transformer and other things that are in the bottom of the cabinet. And I said, this just needs to, needs to be in there so that people can follow wires around and, and, and do what they need to do. Well, a lot of things come out of the cabinet PCB chassis, and I start adding wires, and I said, well, you know, the ones that go up to the play field, I should probably be in a different color, so I'll make those blue. Uh, things that go to the back box, maybe I need to show those in red so you can tell where some of these wires are going. Going all the way over here to the coin door, I start in, well, you know, that's 55 wires or something that go up to the play field, but wait, one of those comes off and goes to the knocker, one of them goes off to the shaker motors. Uh, just different ways. If you follow some of the conventions here with the slashes and things, you'll see how I how I comb through this. But like four days later, this is what I had. You know, so it's just an incredibly complex game. A lot of things in it. Um, I, I dare say you'll even you know Jack was talking about the the, the next game's going to be great too. But there, you'll never see as much stuff in a game as you saw in the Wizard of Oz and. Um, it really warranted 380 pages of, of manual to get there. I've put in uh, thumbnails also, so if you need to, uh, if you know what a, a page, particular page looks like and you just want to scroll through here, you can go to any old page and um, do that. So, yeah, it's just a, a lot of things. I, I saw somebody asking on, on uh, Waz Group about hyperlinks, so that, you know, led me to go in and find out, by golly, how do we do that? So, you know, all the boards are on here, the circuit boards, the parts list for the those boards. Um, so you can get in here and, and uh, move around and look at any part of the circuit board, all the, the part numbers, everything. Um, just a, a lot, a lot, a lot of information, especially with the multiple versions of the boards that we've had, and new boards that Eric puts together. He sends them to me and we uh, you know, ch double check things, make sure everything makes sense. Um, I put in, that's uh, the, the section D, C and D are the parts and the schematics and things. And in section A, I added a whole new section on rules for the game. Um, again, like, like uh, Jack was saying, fine example of that little email from Keith. He, he doesn't want me to come in here and tell you everything that the game will do. You know, one-on-one -on -one we can talk about it a little bit and I can tell you what I know. Not that I can make the shots or anything, but I can tell you what was supposed to happen if you do. 
I mean, we're not all Keith Johnson, but uh, I'm not sure we all want to be. But anyway, um, so you can go through here. The, the different pages in here tell you how, you know, just high level stuff and how to get the munchkin modes and spinning houses and how the uh, wing monkey and rescue multi ball all work. Again, any of this stuff if, that you can't see well, you, you will have this zoom capability in the manual on the, uh, on the game also, so you can move around. And, the, you know, I tried to use color strategically here to, and numbers to show you what you need to do in what order to be able to get some of these things. So, you know, just, uh, just this is the stuff Mitch Album was really interested in. He just was quizzing me endlessly about, now when's that coming out? When can I, when do I get a copy of this? When can I see that? And I, <laughs> I, I actually burnt a little, a little PDF there of, of this portion of the manual and sent it to Gary and let him have it. And I said, now he owes me a, an autographed copy of the book. How about that? So if we, uh, you know, it, between the, the bookmarks and the hyperlinks, we can basically go back and forth to anything. I mean, you can go up to the table of contents here and uh, look in specific at uh, any of these sections. I can start to go to the header of any of these sections by clicking here in the table of contents and then go down to, you know, these are my assembly listings. So if I'm looking specifically for the, you know, single door assembly, then I can go over to the hyperlink here and pop it up. And then once I get there, if I, I want to go back into the table of contents or back to the cover, even the cover's hyperlinked. I mean, the game setup section is there. The, uh, you know, reference diagrams and schematics is there. Um, service and trouble. There's like 1,200. It took me about a week of manually entering these. Uh, there's probably some easier way to do it, but I was brute forcing it just to get it done and get it out to you all. But it's like 1,200 hyperlinks and about 100, 120 uh, bookmarks in here. So it's just something I learned to do a couple of weeks ago. Yeah, this is what I do. Jack's like, this is crazy. But um, yeah, Jack was saying we're going to print hard copies of this and they'll be available later, but uh, I, I know that a lot of people are using tablets and, and, and laptops and things like that to, to use the manual now, so I tried to make it much more useful in that electronic form. Uh, of course, the hyperlinks and things like that won't be available inside the, the manual, inside the game. It won't but, be available in the book. Yeah, that's true, you know, and the people are going to be tapping on the pages the and things. But, the internet, it will be available. That's true, yeah, you can get on there any time. Mm -hmm. We haven't figured out a way to make the book link to the internet. So, uh, like I was, I was talking about a minute ago, the uh, at the end of this this section here, this is the uh, there's the back box wiring diagram that shows the the uh, same thing as the for the back box that I did for the other. It's a wiring diagram. So the next page, then here's what I was talking about the uh, the um, voltage conversion that I put in right at the last minute and. I'm really, I was, I was at my other job. Don't tell anybody that I'm working on my other job at my other job. But <laughs> I, couldn't, uh, I couldn't get the drawing of, the, of the, the connector in there, so I just you know, held it in my hand on a piece of paper I printed out, and I just kind of drew this up. So it's just, it's, I really enjoy doing this stuff. It's, it's, it's very complex. I'm running back and forth. I'm, you know, most information in the manual is in there in several different places, so you can imagine what a torture it is when they change something. I have to change it. It's a ripple effect all the way through. So that's really why it's taken almost two years to get this done. It's, it's just a, it's a real labor of love, though, and I, I, I really enjoyed doing it. Um, let's see, any, anything else you want to talk about specific here, Jack? Well, maybe we'll take some questions if anybody yeah, that'd has be some great. questions. Because that's always yeah, we got uh, about 20 minutes. something that we get in trouble about. If you have a question, please approach the microphone in the aisle. I can't even see the aisle. Okay, yeah, there we go. It's in between all the people. Okay, got it. It doesn't look like it. Wow. That means I have to keep talking? No, it doesn't. It means everybody can go have ice cream and cake or something like that. Is that knocker going to be in the back box? Is it going to have the red wire? Or is it going to be... That knocker's in the bottom of the cabinet. It's not in the back box. Um, some people like to move it up to the back box. I like the sound of it better up there. Did I tell you that? Anyway. Yeah, I've heard that. Well, you have a game in your location. How's that doing? It's doing well. That's the owner of, uh, anybody, anybody ever go to uh, Shorty's? Anybody ever go there? Shorty's. I'd like That's to. So vote. He owns Shorty's, and he's got a Wizard of Oz. Yeah, it's a, it's a great game. And, uh, go up to the microphone. Let me, let's get you on, uh, let's put you on the spot. 
I have to, the disclaimer is that I bought him dinner last night, but he's really it's not. It's a great game. Thank you very much. <laughs> is that what you want to hear? <laughs> he's not obligated to say it's a great no, game. It's, Did he it's buy your shorts If the too, game was I mean, terrible, that's... he's got pretty cool yeah, shorts those, too. Yeah, not quite as cold. We went to the same store wow. for those. Did you guys I call like each this other guy. this morning? I like this guy. What? He's all right. No, it's, a, it's a great game. It's built like a tank. I really like it. Uh, of course, you know, it has issues, but all pinball machines do. Uh, but people love it too. That's what the and IN pinball stands for. It really stands out. I mean, it's not hard to spot the Wizard of Oz between all the other games. Right. We have a lot of different, you know, variety, older games, newer games, uh, different manufacturers. So the Wizard of Oz is easy to spot. And there's always people looking at it too. Right. So right. Uh, yeah, that's cool. It's similar as what you show in your pictures. You know, it's it's just, especially the first couple of months. It was really, uh, yeah. Yeah, and you know another thing about people uh, coming to Shorty's a little jaded sometimes, and there's a lot of cool stuff in pinball, you know, in Seattle, and so uh, you know it's not easy, I guess, to uh, stand out, and that game does that. You know. Right, that's for sure. The game stands out. Yeah. We we wanted the footprint, we wanted the top or the lighting, everything to call you over. Come on right. over and play this thing. Come on over. And this and see is the regular is. model. It's not even the LE. I didn't want to wait that long. <laughs> you what? What was it? What was that? Nothing. You kind of faded away there. Didn't want to what, what did you say? <laughs> didn't want to. That's all. I don't I so no, it's a typical operator. Yeah. I'm an operator too. You're talking out both sides operators. of his mouth. Yeah. Yeah. I so a couple know. other things I added to the manual just real quick and get you out of off the, the manual. Program. You're killing me with this thing. Yeah, I know. It's, I know. It goes on forever. Five years. Some coin door sound control information, some RGB LED theory of operation, a little bit of how, how the RGB LED system works. Um, in addition to that, some troubleshooting, tell you how to, to jump over a board if you have an issue, things like that. So some of that's in the back. Um, also have, uh, I had a, some requests for some uh, five ball pricing cards, so I put in all these, you know, three ball and five ball You even have cards. the rule flow chart somewhere. Yeah. Oh in yeah, that's line. true, I forgot Where about that. Where is that? That's at the end of this was. That's never thing. been seen before. Yeah, there's, at the very end of all the different uh, modes in there, there's an actual flow chart here that just, you know, JP DeWin put this together and gave it oh, to yeah. me, and it just I goes see. into insane yeah. um, so detail. So flow chart for the rules. Uh, so. Yeah, this is like version 6 or 8 or something like that. Yeah. So, yeah, it, and it's probably not even is up to date. Is Yes, it is. It's available. It's live. Right this instant. The Why are you still live here? During you should be down, downloading it. No, another first. You know. <laughs> is Bill here, Masterman? Where is he? Hey, Bill, go up to the microphone there. Tell us, you, you operate, uh, you operate some of our games, right? How are you? Uh, how's it going? How's it going for pinball out there on the route? In general, pinball's been kind of soft, uh, with the exception of Wizard of Oz. It just catches all the attention down here at Did North you buy him dinner too? No, I didn't buy him dinner. I'm just asking. Downtown Tacoma. I didn't buy him dinner. For the most part, we drop in a new typical pinball. It'll do okay for, you know, two, three months. But the Wizard of Oz, uh, well, it's been there one year now as of today. It left the show, went down there. Right. And it's been holding up pretty well. Of course, we experienced the light board issues yep. and the situations we've been working through that's all been getting better with the improved light boards that are coming out now right. um, the game's been well received it's been the number one ranked pinball here in uh, t-town uh, cool. for the past year solid i mean nothing even doing half as well coming close to it so yeah it's been earning well so. that's great that's yes. great love it yes you have a question so I noticed that in the, the manual you show in the light boards with components. I don't want to talk about the manual anymore. Yeah, no, I want to talk about no, I'm going to talk about light boards. Just, yeah, I'll talk about anything both. you want. Okay. okay. So there's components shown on the, the manual for the light boards. Mm. Does it mean you can work on your own light boards? Or? I would not recommend that, no. 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 Well, if you have a microscope and you're yeah, technical. Yeah, if you have the proper right. tools. Yeah. You know, I mean, I wouldn't, I wouldn't work on my own iPhone, to be honest with you. So... You know, if you have the technical ability to do brain surgery or repair the light boards, yeah, sure. I mean, but it's the same know. thing as the old days with the Williams games and, and all that. They gave you schematics and showed you everything, and some of it you're capable of doing. Some of it people find out real quick when they start trying to do it that they're not capable of doing it, and they right. screw something up. You never but know. You know, you, you might want to start equipment. your own pinball company, so we gave you the blueprint how to do that. <laughs> so anybody that wants to start their own company, there's the book. I didn't even have a book to do it. 
So, you know, now the next person, at least they have a book, how I did it, you know, and young Frankenstein, they could figure out <laughs> how I did it. <laughs> how I did it. <laughs> that would be a good game. Yes, sir. Frankenstein. Uh, Jack, I, I for one would like to hear a little bit more about what's coming up with uh, Pat Lawler's game and what's the pre-order and ordering system going to be like on this round? So, uh, you know, I got, I got in trouble um, many times, many, many times. And uh, I got out of trouble many, many, many times. And uh, so do you want to get in trouble again? And I guess the answer is, of course, yes. Oh, you know, yeah. yeah. Let's do it. You now, listen, we're pinball people, right? So we, uh, we defy gravity, uh, just as sometimes the pinball does. So with, with Pat's game, I haven't really come to a formulation what we're going to do or how we're going to do it. Um, there's been a lot of people that still they want to do pre-orders and that kind of thing. The good thing I have to say about Pat's game is that he's... You know, he's at the Whitewood stage right now with his game. He's, he's coming up to his Whitewood. So he's not way far behind the Hobbit in progress or design. So uh, now that we have David and we, we have another hole plugged uh, for sound, uh, which is really important in the game, and we have John Yowsey, which is really spectacularly important because remember, you're not cutting and pasting something from a movie. And we didn't do that with Wizard of Oz, but you're not cutting and pasting something where it already existed. It's an original theme. So having John uh, work with Pat and Dave and the other people on the team to create that game uh, uh, to do the physical asset of it. We know what the game is going to be. Uh, you know, I, I don't want to really tease everybody with what it is. It's, yes, it's, you it's, do. It's yes, a, you do. Come on. You know it's this a, growing. It's a, really, it's a really nice looking. Of course, I didn't play it because he's not done with the Whitewood yet. I'll probably be out there in the next few weeks. But it's a Pat Lola game. And, you know, we talk about operators. You know, um, you guys are operators. When I started the company, people said, well, Jack has pinballsales.com, and he's building a game for all the home customers he has. And... Uh, really, Jack's an electronics technician, and he's an operator. Still today, we operate games. So I was building a game for everybody. I was building a game for the operators on location. Hey, Martin, come on in. You don't have to bend down or anything. You're one of the guys. Um, so we wanted to build a game that would be for everybody, and it would make money on location. You know, games on location, you hear it all the time. We need games on location. We need games everywhere. You know, I. I Put games everywhere. Put them in your house, put them on location, put them on a the roof, wherever you could put them, put them there. You know, it's great. Carport in the garage. It's wonderful, you know. But um, when I was an operator and I opened up a game like, you know, Fun House, um, the first time, or Earthshaker, or Whirlwind, or Twilight Zone, Adam's Family, as an operator, Pat was a hero to me. Because he built, he made games that made me money and made my players play them. And I made a concerted effort to buy games by this guy, Pat Lawler, you know? And that wasn't something that I did. I didn't know who other people were in the industry that really made games. So they, you know, people like that are friends of mine that that made some of those great games back in the day. So here I am in Harvard, Illinois at Pat's building, a building that we used to rent, and I went to see his work on that game for the first time really a few months ago because he started working for the company uh, last uh, August. And um, I saw what he did, and you know, he makes a lot of his own stuff. You know, he doesn't go spend thousands of dollars on tooling. He'll go make his own ramps and put all kinds of stuff together and he'll make his own play field, put his own inserts in, do all that stuff. Make, he's got the metal shop and the wood shop and everything there at his disposal. He's a wizard. He really is. And um, I'm looking at what he did and he's holding these two ramps in his hands and he's talking to me and he's so animated and he's so excited and he, he's so positive and he's got so much energy and he's got his glasses on like you saw in there and he's talking to me and he's right in my face talking to me and for like 
a minute, I didn't hear a word he said. Because I'm just looking at him and he looked like this mad scientist. And I said, this is Pat Lawler who made all those spectacular games. This guy works for Jersey Jack Pinball. Really? How cool is that? You know, that he works for our company. Making a pinball machine again after being retired and not wanting to do pinball. So he's so positively motivated right now and he's so happy uh, to be doing this. And I'm sure his wife is happy that he's doing this. And there's millions of pinball people around the world that are happy he's doing this. And they're gonna be happier when his game gets built. And you know, it's, it's a dream come true for me. Um, I didn't have it, like this target, you know, that, that, well, kick it off my bucket list. We have Pat Lawler working for the company because, you know, life is this thing that it happens. Some of it you plan and some of it you don't plan and things have to happen a certain way. You know, we rented Pat's building in the beginning. What are you doing? I'm just showing some other stuff. Oh. Plenty here. We rented Pat's building in the beginning, you That's know, what he helped I do, us mess out. With this computer. And there was never really a, a talk about him coming to work for the company. But I knew he'd, he'd want to come work for the company if we were successful and we built a really great game. So he loves what we did with The Wizard of Oz, and he wants to build on top of that with his ideas and his genius and his, his um, innovations, and our platform allows him to do that. So I guess, you know, that's kind of, did you, I don't think you got your answer anyway, but you know. So, so what is what was the question? I, uh, so it, it's probably not going to be a limited edition game made. Uh, it's probably going to be a special edition game. And we'll have a time period when the game gets ordered. And we'll build as many special edition games as we get orders for. And there'll be a simple payment plan. Maybe you'll make one payment and the other payment when the game ships. And there'll be certain something that makes that game special. That's kind of what I'm thinking. The whole LE thing is overdone. You know, get to keep our numbers. Get to keep your numbers. Absolutely, yes. numbers are really important to me. Now, numbers. You know, uh, people that design the game will probably be signing games and things like that. So, I, I, I want to reward the people that bought Wizard of Oz and bought Hobbit. So there'll be something that happens with Pat's game if you bought Wizard of Oz this, you'll get this. And if you bought Hobbit, you'll get that. And if you bought both, you'll get something else. So that it rewards um, loyalty. Stop, you're killing me. It rewards loyalty. I can distract you, And it you. rewards uh, patience. And um, if you got a job for Butch, let me know. <laughs> let me know. Yeah, like right? I don't have anything else to he's, do. Yeah. He's great. He's, when do you start working on a Hobbit you, manual? You got the manual hole filled. You got too, the right? manual. The manual. Yeah. You know, it's going You're to be here fantastic. for hours. Right? Go home. It's going to be fantastic. Yeah. I'm telling you right yeah, now. Yeah, I know. You're going to like this a lot. I know. I have, we're not hiring any. Awesome. We're not doing anything with Arnold Schwarzenegger. It's not a tumor. I, <laughs> 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 Moving along. Yeah. So that was a little bit more of an answer, right? Yeah, it's closer, but All right. still, yeah. You're... Anybody else have any more questions? That we cannot answer. Go ahead, Butch. <laughs> you got it. You're killing me. Ask me a question. I'll give you an answer. Oh, Bill, I didn't see you. How are you doing? Good. Great. See me after class. <laughs> <laughs> You're pounding erasers for the rest of the day. It's, it's, it's coming well. I think it'll be on time. You know, uh, uh, we want we'll, to we'll build about a dozen games uh, probably in the beginning of September. Put them out, bang the crap out of them, make sure they work, make sure the lights don't give us any trouble. There'll be something else that gives us trouble for sure. Uh, you know, it's a pinball machine. My, my patented saying is what? If it's it not broke, broke, it's it not pinball, pinball, right? So, you know, for the most part, we want to make sure our games work. Uh, we don't want to say, we're not General Motors. We can't aspire to that, you know, where you build millions of vehicles and, you know, you got to recall them. So uh, anything that's built by hand or individuals uh, is going to have problems. But this is really nice seeing you, Bill. No surprise. Bill was there with our first game at E3 way back. Uh -huh.
Bill from Vancouver. Nice to see you. I'm hearing the music. Yeah, that means uh, that's our five minute warning, I'm pretty sure. So if you have any short questions, well, they have short questions. The answer is never short. That's the problem. You got anything else? Surely somebody, come on. I can never listen to myself in these things. You just Even did, hearing like, myself like your before, video. That's weird. I can't. I can't. That's weird. Hello. Pizza. Hi. I have a question. Uh, with regards to uh, parts for the Wizard of Oz, are, are you going to start uh, selling them yet? Yes. Uh, they'll be up on uh, a couple of websites, and you'll be able to buy uh, whatever you need. Yeah, because I'm also from Canada, so it's really just buying parts in advance of uh, uh, issues that may occur. Oh, well, I'll sell you an extra game. If you can find out how to stay ahead of the issues, I want to talk to you later after class, too. No, it's Be not cool. that bad, but no. no. And all the part numbers and everything, of course, are in the manual. Some of them are even right. Jim Shelberg, everybody. Jim's an amazing resource. I love this man. Community. I'm not afraid to say it. And Gary Flower. And Gary Flower, yep. And Martin. And Martin. Of course, Martin is the biggest resource. I love a lot of these guys. I'm sorry. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Nothing but love for you, Martin. All right. Anything else? Done? Thank you Thank all you again, guys. everybody. I love everybody. We're Thank here you. all the night. So. That was a nice job you did. Awesome, yes. Very good.